metal activities. So this is the reactivity of metals when you compare them to each other, deciding um, how active they are, how reactive they are, um, and then if reactions will occur based on how reactive the metal in the reaction is. All right, so we call this oxidation reduction. Um, and oxidation reduction is when there's one atom that's losing electrons and another atom that's gaining electrons. The acronym we use, oil oxidation is losing electrons, and then rig reduction is gaining, can just kind of help you remember. A lot of times um, the idea of oxidation, people can understand that it means loss, but they forget that it's electrons. So when you lose something that's negative, it means you're becoming more positive. And then reduction of electron or reduction is gain but again of electrons so you're gaining electrons so again if you're gaining electrons your um, value is going down because you're becoming more negative so people tend to think like gaining you go up um, but it's opposite because electrons are negative so these acronyms can help you kind of remember like which term goes with which and then if you can remember electrons are negative um, or at least keep that in your mind when you're doing the math. It helps you know which way um, charges or oxidation states actually are going to go. Okay, so in order to figure out if, an, if a reaction is an oxidation reduction reaction, first thing you have to do is assign oxidation numbers. This is a review from a previous unit, but it is on page 220 in your book, and these are all of the rules you need in order to assign oxidation states. And then the other thing you have to do is determine um, if electrons are changing. If they are, it's oxidation reduction. If they aren't, it's not. Um, so I'm going to walk you through a couple of examples. So this one is just filling in the number of electrons being lost or gained and determine if it's an example of oxidation reduction. So here where I have sodium with an oxidation state of zero, the first rule here says any uncombined element is zero. So I'm going from zero to plus one, which means I'm losing one electron. If it's losing, that means it's oxidation. And I can tell it's losing because it's on the product side of my arrow. Here I'm going from chlorine again, zero, and an uncombined element, not uncombined atom, but uncombined element. Um, so zero, and then I'm going to two negatives, which means I'm gaining two electrons, but again, here's my arrow, so it's being added on the reactant side. That's reduction. And then one last time, going from chromium uh, two plus to chromium six plus means I lost four electrons because it's after the arrow on the product side losing. That means it's oxidation. Uh, then as I compare those, for example, if I had more than one of these in a reaction, you would tell me, is the reaction going to happen? And you do that based on this chart. Uh, this chart is in your book as well. Um, I forget the page number. Somewhere in chapter 8, um, or possibly, I want to say 16. Um, but it's just the activity series. You can Google it as well, or look at the slides that are attached. Um, okay, so if any ion that's being oxidized is higher on the activity list. So here, this is an increase in reactivity. So most active is at the top, so that's most likely to react, and then least active is at the bottom, so less likely to react. And you can see these ones down here, uh, with the exception of mercury, a lot of those are used for like coins or for jewelry, because they tend not to react, they're going to last a really long time. And then these ones, when you look at the top, they're in groups like one and two on the periodic table. Um, we know that those are highly reactive. We rarely find them in their um, solid form. We usually find them combined in elements because they are very reactive. So uh, first thing I'm going to do when I have one of these reactions is I'm going to go through and assign oxidation states. So again, uncombined element is zero. Uh, hydrogen is always plus one to make the the oxidation states equal to zero. Chlorine is going to have to be negative one. Between magnesium and chlorine, there's a rule that says magnesium, because it's in group two, will have a positive two oxidation state. Chlorine still has a negative one because there's two of them. So uh, two times one gives me negative two. So that's how I'll get my zero. 
And then last is the zero on the hydrogen. Again, that part should have been reviewed from um, the previous unit, um, unit four. So then you're determining if this is an oxidation reduction reaction. Well, I can see magnesium going from magnesium zero to magnesium two plus. I'm losing two electrons, therefore that's oxidization. Um, uh, and then I have hydrogen actually going from plus one. I'm gaining an electron and going to hydrogen zero. Actually, I'm gaining two electrons um, because there's the two there, so just balancing it. That is reduction. So yes, this is an oxidization reduction reaction. I'm going to do it again on the last one. I have iron. Um, oxygen is minus 2, which means that that's plus 3. Let's see, negative 2 plus 3, uh, negative 2, and plus 2. So when I look at these, I have iron that's changing. Right, Iron going from 0 to plus 3. Whoopsie. That should have been an arrow, um, which means I lost three electrons. That's oxidization. And then let's see, I have gaining one electron to that. That's reduction. So even though I didn't go all the way down to zero there, I did still lose an electron, um, which makes that reduction. So yes, this is oxidation, oxidation reduction. Then you can say, will this reaction occur? How you can tell that they'll occur is that whatever is being oxidized has to be higher on that list that we saw before. So because magnesium is the one being oxidized in number one, uh, that needs to be more active than the hydrogen. So if I go back to that list, whoops, went too far, sorry, and I find magnesium, which is here, and hydrogen is here, magnesium is more active. So the one that's being oxidized needs to be more active, so then yes, a reaction will occur. So yes, it's oxidization reduction, yes, the reaction will occur. Uh, for the second one, um, let's see. Where is iron? Here's iron, oh, let me change colors. And vanadium, <coughs> is, vanadium is not on this list. Um, so I'm gonna have to look at the periodic table. Um, okay, so when I look at a periodic table, I have vanadium here and I have iron here. Typically, uh, we get less active as we go across. So you can see like gold, silver um, are over here, which is what we tend to, platinum, which is what we tend to make jewelry out of. I think I said that before. And then these ones um, tend to always be in compounds because they're most active. So it kind of goes like this as far as like will a reaction occur. Um, this has the least reactive, and then this has the most reactive. So this reaction, because iron is the one being oxidized here, um, it would have to be more active than vanadium, and it's probably not. It's, it's not on that list, so I'm going to say probably not, so I'm going to say no. A reaction will not occur. Um, it's not specifically on this list. Um, hold on, let me... Okay, so I paused and did some quick research, and I can't find um, vanadium really on any <laughs> charts, like when I try to Google it. Um, and then even when I look at some of the um, chemical, like professional chemical websites or even school chemical websites, no one really talks about vanadium. It's just the general trend that I discussed here. So again, most active up here and uh, least active down here. Again, that's a general trend. Um, you definitely want to go by this activities chart, uh, but if you were ever stumped, you could use the periodic table and the general trend. So that's what we would use here is that general trend. And that's why we would say, no, there's no reaction, um, for any test or something, I would give you ones that were on that list. Um, let's see. Okay, but that's it. So again, step one is determine if it is oxidation reduction. You do that by assigning oxidation states. And then two, will a reaction occur? So first you have to decide who's being oxidized and who's being reduced. And then once you do, you have to look them up on that chart. Again, the one that's being oxidized needs to be higher 
on this list. So the oxidized one needs to be higher on the list in order for a reaction to occur.